Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. It's Irata Ahmed here uh, with a new episode of Monday Musings Parenting Podcast for Muslim Parents, inshallah. So let's have a look what we will talk in today's episode, episode seven. Uh, sibling, I think most of you have guessed it right. Yes, sibling rivalry or sibling jealousy. I don't think anybody said sibling love. So we will try to answer these three questions. Number one, do brothers and sisters love each other all the time? Is it even possible? Number two, tackling sibling jealousy or sibling rivalry. First step, stop making comparisons. Second step, accepting children for who they really are. So one day I was doing a parenting workshop and you know, being a language teacher, I decided to do a little collocation activity with vocabulary. When, sh when I shout out the word, the mothers had to come up with a word that goes with it, like collocation. So when I said a bar, half of the class shouted out soap and the other half said chocolate. And when I said sibling, you know, half the class shouted out rivalry and the other half said jealousy. No one came up with love. Can sibling and love even be put together? To me, these two words don't seem to fit, to fit each other very well, right? It just goes to show how we, all parents, you know, Muslim, non-Muslim, uh, we all suffer from sibling rivalry or sibling jealousy. So to begin with, I want you to remember how you got on with your own brothers and sisters. Did you love each other all the time? Did you not argue or fight or hit each other? Not even once? Because I remember growing up, I had perfectly natural reasons to hate my sister or to argue with my brother sometimes. I was the youngest of four siblings and I, I remember very well the time where my older brother and sisters were very jealous of me because my father loved me very much. So I, I, this particular incident, I, we always remember and we have a good laugh about it. So one time, one day, my mother decided to pass my older sister's expensive party dress, fancy dress onto me while she was sorting out our clothes. So when I wore that dress, my sister saw me and she was furious to see me with her dress and she hit me so badly. And I was trying to explain through my sobs that my mom is sorting our clothes and it was her decision. At that point, she came in and she interfered. She told off my sister and she smacked her. And in turn, my sister ran away from the house, right, for a few hours. And after this incident, she just hated me for a few more days. And... I'm sure if she's listening to me now, she must be having a good laugh. But there are days and times and, you know, days where siblings don't get on well. Because it's a myth people believed in the olden days that brothers and sisters loved each other all the time. If you come to think of it, right, whether you live in a love marriage or arranged marriage, you sometimes you know, argue with your husband, sometimes you comfort each other, sometimes you annoy, sometimes you bring joy to each other. Because the truth is, all human beings, right, including siblings, we experience a wide range of feelings and emotions. So brothers and sisters, no exception, you know, sometimes they love each other, sometimes they hate each other. They can entertain each other during this quarantine, but they also irritate and annoy each other because the same, they share the same parents and the same household 24-7, 24-7. All of us, including our children, are born with different character traits, with different characteristics that don't always mix well. So, um, but every mother seems to think, why on earth my children fight all the time? While the truth is, all children fight and argue sometimes. 
And if you are one of those mothers who think your children fight abnormally more than other children, you know, I'm here to remind you that you don't know any other child as closely as your own children. Number one, right? So all children fight, except that. And secondly, as a mother, the quickest way we can enhance a loving relationship between our children is to stop making comparisons. If our children feel that they are seen and judged in relation to their siblings, or sometimes in relation to younger version of ourselves, they end up hating their siblings or they end up hating themselves. Because every child craves to be seen in the wholeness of their own character. They're born different and that difference should be accepted. However difficult it may be for a mother to accept, we must accept the differences in our children and stop making comparisons. I know it's really difficult, right? So I always go in my head, I talk to myself, so Maya can never be Sophia and Sophia can never be Ibrahim and Ibrahim can't possibly be Saida. No child is good or bad, kind or mean, annoying or loving all the time, but rather all of these at one time or another. We should avoid building images and perceptions in our head like this one is a good child and that one is a problem child because subhanAllah our children will sense our perceptions. They do and they will act it out for us. They will act accordingly. Do you have that one child who always says, oh, you always think bad of me anyways, right? They know this. They know our perceptions. So while I knew it's important to see each child as a distinct person, I really struggled to follow it through until I started making more connection with my own childhood. We all have to sit with our own childhood and figure out what makes us react and what makes us respond to different qualities in our children. Those who grew up with a positive self-image will be pleased to see some of their own qualities in their children. And those who struggled with positive self-image will find it difficult to accept when the qualities they have always rejected in themselves emerge in their children. We can't tolerate it when our children behave in ways that are exactly we once behaved and were told, why can't you be like so and so? For example, if you were always made feel guilty for being sensitive, shy, withdrawn, introverted, then to see these traits in your children can be your worst nightmare, right? So until I stopped repressing those feelings in myself, and accepting myself, it was very difficult for me to accept my children for who they are, for who they are. So in a nutshell, when you accept yourself for who you really are, it becomes easier to accept your children with their differences. And that is the most important step for stopping making comparisons, stopping making comparisons. What are some of the things that influence the way siblings interact with one another? Firstly, they're born with different character traits that may not suit each other very well. Just like how oil and water don't mix well together. So one may be shy, introverted, withdrawn, like I have a child who's very shy and you know, very withdrawn. And one may be socially outgoing, optimist and active, right? One is a warrior and another is a dreamer. We have to be realistic. In some sibling relations, our aim could simply be maintaining peace, not necessarily forcing them to play with each other peacefully ever after. They may be oil and water in character 
and they may go through their own phase of you know development they go through different states of development right so sometimes just maintaining the distance for some time may help us to go to get through that troubled phase with fewer arguments and fewer fights other factors can include age and gender for example boys are physically more active and girls can sit down for a prolonged time getting on with their art projects or with their work and along comes a troublemaker brother who disturbs and annoys all the sisters because they're not playing football with him right because i have five girls and a boy so this clearly applies to my family situations because so i seem to have a, a son who seems to annoy his brother, sisters all the time age also influences sibling relationships for example two of my children who often get into arguments have nearly like seven eight years of difference in age because it's a myth to believe the wider the age gap the lesser the fights and arguments another myth on the contrary i think they don't read the same books they can't play the same games they can't have the same hobbies they have less in common and therefore they won't spend as much time together so taking all of this into consideration they will you know they will get into more uh, fights and arguments or troubled situations so how can we foster sibling uh, better relationships among siblings stop making comparisons and accepting children for who they are and finally to make children feel understood when they get mad with one another because we seem to have a very good reason for yelling spanking saying mean words like it's the only way i can make you listen but when it comes to children we seem to have this attitude that they are not allowed to get angry you know getting angry getting stressed getting overwhelmed is only for grown ups remember children imitate our behavior be it kindness or meanness connection or coldness so if we want to foster a loving relationship among the siblings we can only but display the same connection and compassion when they do things that annoy us we have to show empathy often i'm caught telling to one of my children but can't you understand her can't you understand him just be patient be kind and i may be lacking the same skills myself so fostering loving relationships require connection and compassion from all family members including parents so getting angry with siblings is acceptable does this mean hitting each other is also acceptable no because feelings and actions are different so i have to explain to a big brother that he cannot act out every feeling in a way that hurts his little sister we have the knowledge and patience we can communicate this difference to all our children inshallah because words are extremely powerful more so to a young child for example most of us often say things like stop that this minute you're very bad to hit your sister like this you know god will punish you for such behavior so the children who have been made feel guilty for getting angry will conclude that it's a sin to get angry however much they try to repress their angry feelings or their strong feelings they just can't help it right they keep being mean because they're looking for an outlet to get rid of their unacceptable emotions compare it with you have a very good reason to get angry your sister should not have touched your lego dinosaur you took all day to build it uh, you can get angry but you cannot hit her so next time please put it somewhere higher up where she cannot touch it right you can even suggest some funny ways to deal with anger like if you feel like hitting go punch the pillow in your bedroom or go to the bathroom and you know make wudu and you know islamically um you know lie down sit down so suggest making wudu and repeating istighfar you know a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem suggest a healthy uh, 
outlet, whatever an outlet we suggest for anger to get out, we should try not to make children feel guilty for the emotions they are experiencing. Because when they feel they are understood, they can then display some compassion towards others. Showing empathy truly helps to overcome more sibling fights and sibling arguments, inshallah. So um, in a nutshell, uh, dear uh, mums, uh, beloved sisters, try to not to make comparisons between your children and accept them for who they are and also allow them to experience their feelings, their angry feelings when they get mad with one another and suggest a healthy outlet to get rid of these feelings. As long as we display you know, connection and compassion and empathy and make them feel understood and seen with their feelings, uh, inshallah, they should not uh, build this resentment or anger towards one another, inshallah. And also reading stories from, uh, you know, Islamic stories like the story of Yusuf alayhi salam and his brothers and having oral discussions about what happened. Everything started with a jealousy. You know, they they didn't stop that jealousy there and then and it just carried on because shaitan takes advantage when you are angry and jealous, Shaitan whispers, right, was worse and takes advantage of that. So try to stop these feelings or uh, allow them to, to uh, express these feelings in a, in a healthy way, like allow them a healthy outlet to get rid of these feelings. All of this should help uh, to foster a better sibling relationship, inshallah. So, um, Available now to download the well planned Muslim mum, alhamdulillah. Uh, go check it out on the website. And we have had amazing response from the people who purchased it. Check out the feedback on uh, Raising Young Scholars social media. And if it's something that you have been looking for, then today and tomorrow is the last day for the early bird discount, inshallah. So I look forward to connecting with you all in the next episode of Monday Musings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.